CO2 is an essential ingredient in photosynthesis. So then what do you think will happen if we plot the rate of photosynthesis versus CO2 concentration? Well, if you think the rate of photosynthesis will increase with CO2 concentration, then you're not wrong. That's exactly what happens, but not linearly. It, it's somewhat like what happens with light. When you increase the amount of light, what happens to the rate of photosynthesis? Similar thing happens. If you don't remember what happens when light is increased, then I would suggest you go back to our video called Factors of Photosynthesis Light and take a look at it. A similar thing happens here. The rate initially increases linearly and then finally it levels off because there are at that point other limiting factors like light, for example, or temperature which are not good enough. Let's say there is not enough light intensity or let's say there is the temperature is too low or too high and hence at this point even if you increase the CO2 concentration the rate of photosynthesis won't increase but at low CO2 concentrations the rate of photosynthesis does increase and in fact what you are looking at is the graph for C3 plants. You might remember that there are two types of plants with regards to photosynthesis C3 plants and C4 plants. So this is what happens with C3 plants. What do you think will happen with C4 plants? What will the graph for C4 plants look like? In order to predict that, we need to recall the differences between C3 and C4 plants, how they utilize carbon dioxide. So first, let's look at the C4 plants, what exactly they do as far as carbon dioxide is concerned. So this is a mesophyll cell in a C3 plant and this is the stoma. So carbon dioxide enters through stomata and then enters the mesophyll cell where it enters the Kelvin cycle. And you know that at the end of the Kelvin cycle, what is produced is carbohydrates. This is typically what happens in C3 plants. Now, what happens that is so special in C4 plants? Again, through the stomata, the carbon dioxide enters. And inside the mesophyll cells, it enters not the Kelvin cycle, but what is called the C4 cycle. So the C4 cycle actually starts in the mesophyll cell and continues in the bundle sheath cell. If you remember, bundle sheath cells are the cells that surround the vascular bundle. That is a bundle that has xylem and phloem. So it starts here. This is the C4 pathway. And then continues in the bundle sheath cell. And then things get recycled here. and then go back to the mesophyll cell. And what is released here is carbon dioxide. And then here the carbon dioxide enters the Kelvin cycle in the bundle sheath cell. And as usual, carbohydrates are formed. So why go through all this hassle of first entering the C4 pathway, then again releasing the CO2 in the bundle sheet cell and then having the Kelvin cycle in the bundle sheet cell? Well, the answer is photorespiration. Photorespiration is a wasteful pathway that happens in C3 plants and the C4 plants avoid this by going through this elaborate pathway, the C4 pathway. So in effect, what happens is carbon dioxide is concentrated in C4 plants in the bundle sheet cell. That means at the same atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide in C3 and C4 plants, the C4 plants are more sensitive to CO2 concentration. That's because CO2 is concentrated in the bundle sheet cell where the Kelvin cycle is occurring. 
So what does this mean with regards to our graph? So in C4 plants, as you've seen, the photosynthesis is more sensitive to CO2 concentration. That means at low CO2 concentrations themselves, the rate of photosynthesis is higher than what you would expect in a C3 plant. So what does it mean for our graph? It means that at low CO2 concentrations themselves, the rate of photosynthesis starts rising steeply in the beginning itself. And then it levels off, but much earlier than C3 plants. So that means, so look here where it has started leveling off here. So it turns out that this is around 0.36% of CO2 at which the C4 graph starts leveling off. That means it's saturated at that concentration of CO2. Whereas if you look at C3 over here, it's far from leveling off. It's at this concentration of CO2. The C3 graph is the rate of photosynthesis in C3 plants is only about half or even less than half of what it could achieve. Now, can you tell me what the concentration of CO2 is in the atmosphere? The atmospheric concentration of CO2 is around 0.04%. So this is close to the percentage of CO2 where the C4 graph starts leveling off. That means at atmospheric CO2 concentrations, the C4 plants are already operating at close to the maximum of their rate of photosynthesis. Whereas C3 plants, they're operating at about half or less than half of their maximum rate of photosynthesis. So who is more efficient? Naturally, the C4 plants. And it's all because of their elaborate mechanism of the C4 pathway and the CO2 concentrations being high in the bundle sheet cells where the Kelvin cycle takes place.